Okay, I want to show you guys a neat trick. You're gonna like this. This is cool. <laughs> okay, I want to I want to design an airfoil. Okay, this is I'm trying to recreate a um an SD's model rocket called the Red Nova. Looks like this. Okay, so this is a side on view. So I got the proper shape of the fins. I'll scale them until it feels right based on the scale I'm going to use. It doesn't have to be exact scale. It just has to be close. But the thing is, I scale it. I turn it into an SVG. I import that SVG into Tinkercad, which makes me a file. Now, I actually it actually brought in both fins. Here's the other fin, the original one, um, because there's two. The top one's smaller. So I just got rid of everything but the big one, and I kept the small one, modified it, and what I'll do is later on, I'll bring this over here, and I'll scale it to the right size, because basically the upper fins are a little smaller, but don't, don't worry about that. First thing you gotta do is you gotta clean up your shape. You gotta square the shape, right? The shape looks like it's square. It's not. It's not even close. So the way you do that is very, very simple. You bring in a cube, and you make it as wide as the whole thing, and then you turn off your snap grid, and then you just move it in until you got the entire surface covered. See, so keep moving in, keep moving in, and there, I got the whole surface. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Bring in another square, make it as wide as the whole fin, and hold down your arrow key, and you'll see it start to intersect. There you go. Push it, push it, push it. A little bit more got it you're going to do the other spaces as well so what you're going to do is you're going to put your work plane there and you're going to drop a cube just so it's roughly in the right spot like that and then you're going to come over here and do the same thing to this face and you're going to drop a cube here and make it as wide remember we're going for sports go here it doesn't have to be exact and then same thing just start Start moving it, and there we go. That face is clean, because you don't want any curves. Curves are gonna give you a, a hard time. And that face is now clean. And what you do is you just take all this junk and you join it together. Now you have perfectly clean faces, and most importantly, these two are actually square to the grid that we're working with in Tinkercad, which is what you want. Export this, re-import this. That gets rid of all the junk, and now you have a simple STL. Well, I already did that to this one. <coughs> now, here's the problem, though. A rocket, a good rocket, a nice rocket, has airfoils. So you have a curvature to the fin. And I could leave them square, but we all want airfoils in our fins. They, they look better, they work better, they also print better. Flat faces in vase mode don't print as well. If there's more geometry, it prints better. And plus, it looks nice. So we're not going to do a curved airfoil because that's a real pain in the butt. <laughs> there are ways to do semi-curved. We're just going to do a chevron airfoil, like the Nike Smoke. So I did this. If you look, I got a really nice, perfect chevron cut to that. How did I do that? It's not as hard as you might think, and there's a little trick to make it easier. So you're going to use this tool here. And you're going to have to figure out a couple things that you want to do first, but this is the tool we're going to use. We're going to use this one here. How tall do you want it to be? How deep do you want it to be? Width is easy. You're just going to make it wider than all of this. Okay? So just make it nice and wide so we know it's wide. This is another reason why you want these faces to be square, because this works a lot better when you have square faces. I want to make sure the edge of the fin is two nozzle diameters so that when I'm doing vase mode, the ends of these fins will seal shut. Now, the only end of this fin that um, is parallel to the print bed is going to be this fin edge right here. So that's the only one I technically need to make um, airtight. But you don't want razor sharp fins because you're going to get ringing pretty badly. And um, it's also going to um, make the fins easier to break and also make them sharp, especially when you're making them this small. So having a little bit of thickness makes them a little bit safer, plus better structural integrity. So I'm going to use 0 0.8 millimeters. I chose an 8 millimeter thickness. So I subtract 0 0.8 millimeters from that. Now I have 7.2 millimeters. Divide that in half, you have 3.6. 
which means this is going to be 3.6 millimeter tall. I will then copy it, invert it, and um, align it with the top surface. And that's going to give me something that I've already made right here. Okay, and I've chosen 20 millimeters depth. That gave me what I like, 25 too much, 20 about right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this in until it lines up. And as you can see, it's going to cut. Now here's the thing, you can align one of these with each of these surfaces and it is smart enough to figure out that you have an overlapping set of cuts. So you select both parts, we do an alignment, and we align, instead of picking center, which is gonna do that, we're gonna align with this face, with this edge. And that brings the two in line with that. Now our snap grid is still off and sometimes Tinkercad does weird things with models like this. So we're going to back it off two clicks. So click an empty area, click your model. Now the arrow keys, as long as your view on the screen is aligned with the X and Y, your arrow keys will move the object along X and Y. So I'm just gonna give it two left clicks, one, two. That guarantees that I cut off this back face completely. See how this back face is now totally opaque? While before it was shimmering like this, that means it might not have cut off the entire back face. It might have left a 0 0.0001 millimeter sliver or some crap like that. Now here's the really cool part. I need to figure out how to al I can align it with this face. Yes, I can align it with this face easily enough. Just rotate it 90 degrees, but this is the face going against the body tube, so we don't have to do that one. But I do need to do these other two. How do I get that? There's no way for me to get Tinkercad to tell me what this angle is. So I don't know how many degrees to rotate this. Well, how about I let Tinkercad do it for me? Yeah, this is cool. Wait until you see this. So we copy this into the clipboard. In Tinkercad, this is how you copy a model from one workplace to another. You hit this copy command, and now you have this paste command available. So if I hit paste, it's going to give me another one. Okay. We don't need that right now. But first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a work plane on this face. And now I'm going to hit paste. And it aligns the part with the work plane. How freaking cool is that? So now I just take this and rotate it. I believe that's a negative 90. Yes. And then I select this part and this part. I hit my align tool up in the corner here. I hold down the shift key and I select this part because I don't want that part to move. Otherwise, it'll move out of alignment with this part. Okay. Now I go to um, hit the center to align it with the center of the fin. And then I got to look for the fins marker. The fin is going to have a marker right here. Boom. Now it's aligned with the top edge of the fin. And then I come around to this face and I do exactly the same thing. I use the plane tool to put the work plane on that face. I hit paste again, and look at that. It's aligned. Oops, I forgot I am on the plane already. Here we go. So we are already aligned with this face. So again, I'm going to rotate it negative 90 degrees. I'm going to, it's already selected. Hold down shift, select the blue fin, hit the align tool, shift again, select the blue fin so it doesn't move. I'm going to center it on the blue fin, and then I'm going to align it with the edge of the blue fin there. And that's it. I have my three cuts. Now, first, we're going to move these away a little bit. So we're going to grab this one. We're going to move it back two clicks. We're going to grab this one. We're going to move it left two clicks. We just want to make sure it actually cuts off the entire face. Now I have everything set up. Everything looks good. Everything's aligned. I select the whole entire mess, and I hit Combine you go you have a perfect chevron somewhat airfoiled fin in tinkercad and it takes care of all these angles for you and gives you that beautiful finished shape oh, you can't see nothing there i'm trying to pick a better color so you can see it better and the white works pretty good how cool is that so that is an automated way for you to very quickly, very rapidly bring a shape into Tinkercad and turn it into a printable airfoiled fin. And now what I'm going to do is this is already a second copy. So I'm going to just delete that since I already made one here. I already have it dimensioned. Remember in vase mode, 
um, you want everything to be an even number divisible by both 2 and 3. So if you print at 0.2 millimeters or you print at 0.3 millimeters, you want to make sure the dimensions of your part are evenly divisible by that or you can get glitches in the slicer. So basically, make everything an even number. Now, this was like 93.89 and this was like 87.76. So I just made it 94 by 88. So it's, a, and then this one here is eight. So this way they're all even numbers. Now to create the larger fin, I'm just going to bring this here. We are going to bring it up a little bit so I can see it just like that. I'm going to align them with the corners. So that corner and that corner. And now I'm going to, well, first I have to duplicate this thing because I need two of them. There's the small one. And then I'm just going to grab this corner here, hold down a shift key, click and drag. And just make until it's approximately close enough. So it's approximately the same size as this fin, which I can now delete. And now I have my two properly scaled fins that match. The Red Nova scale fins close enough that unless someone took a ruler to it, <laughs> you're not going to know the difference. And now I just got to add these little decorative channels on the side. Don't forget to put 45s on both ends of them so they're vase mode compatible. And I'll add them to the model. And then I got to figure out how I'm going to model this nose cone. That nose cone's a neat looking nose cone. It's basically just a cone. It's basically just two cones. Uh, he has an actual close up of just the cone. Where is it? I saw a close-up of just the cone. There it is. So pretty easy. This is just a straight cylinder. That's just a straight cone. That's just a straight cone. So all I need to do is have one truncated cone, one semi-truncated cone, because you don't want to come to a complete point in vase mode. You want to have a little tip. Three millimeters is usually the smallest you want to go. Now the trick is, how do I simulate this? Because I can't actually print that. That's not actually possible to print. I could make that open. And that might actually look neat. So I could have the rib end here. The ribs will be in here. And then have a chamfer on the inside going into the second cone. This way I have one monolithic structure and then this will just be open on top. But that'll kind of look like the inlet that it's supposed to represent here. So that'll work fine. But that will be for a different time. That's the end of this video. Let me know what you think of it. And happy rocket building.